The more worlds we travel to, the more questions I have. It's not just the hardships of the people, but something more. You are right, but there is something more at work here. Yes, these dead worlds, they... well, they have a pattern to them. They were all touched by the Mandalorian Wars and the Jedi Civil War. But sometimes, well, I feel as if they are all connected in some other way. The attacks on Qatar, Telos itself, the decay on Dantooine. Something is wrong with life. The connections have been damaged, sickened. Sometimes I feel like I almost understand and then it just slips away. So close. No, I do not. But I do think there is some greater plan at work here. Perhaps. Dantooine is only one of the worlds. It was only the start of the journey. I would like to study the other locations. It is curious that the Jedi Masters chose those worlds to travel to. I wonder if the two are linked, but I know not how. Yes, General? Let me see what you have. That's everything. Now all you need is a little quiet time with the workbench. You have befriended the seer. Her species does not see as we do. They perceive the galaxy through the Force, and it is how she found you. It is a rare gift squandered on her people. The Sith carry the battle to you, and you spare them. And as we travel, the empty places of this ship are filled. I hope your thoughts in this matter are clear. If you take her on as a servant, know that the Sith meet their end at the hands of their apprentices. It is not something I would wish to happen to you. This one you have saved has other masters. Though blind, she has ties to darkness. Her presence here is a threat to us, to you. Do not underestimate her or her loyalty.
Perhaps. I am not convinced. Did he? And what do you make of that? The Mandalorians were right to respect you on the field of battle. The Jedi are gone, vanished. Now, an entire planet of Force sensitives wiped clean of life. And now this slice of the galaxy is blind. It is no coincidence. The two events are tied. I fear you are right. And I fear it may prove more than that. War is a hunger. And there are spirits in the galaxy whose hunger is never satisfied. But there is little to be done about it now. Watch the seer carefully. She may reveal more. Ask, and I will answer. That crystal is bonded to you. Through you, it acquires its character and strength. And through it, your power is enhanced. Most interesting. Your crystal does not perfectly reflect your current self. Remove it from your lightsaber, then ask me about it again. Is there something else you wished? He, if he can truly be called a man any longer, is one of the dark lords that pursues you. I do not think he knows what you are. Not yet. He spared the Miraluka, and that may have been the last shred of feeling that exists within him. Keep his slave close to you. I suspect there was a reason he spared her, and perhaps a reason that she survived when the rest of her people and the Jedi did not. Entertain what illusions you will. I am too tired to argue them with you. One cannot have power of that magnitude that her master possesses and still think and perceive the universe as we do, as most of us do. I had hoped that you would not have to confront him, but her presence here has changed all that. You will have to meet him in battle. You must be prepared to sacrifice the blinded one. Perhaps her death will buy you the time you need to deal with her master. Entertain what illusions you will. I am too tired to argue them with you. It is a technique that is almost as old as the Sith themselves. It is a means of severing connections between life, the Force, and feeding upon the death it causes. It cannot be taught. It can only be gained through instinct, through experiencing its effects firsthand. Yes, and he fed upon its destruction. It will sustain him for a time. Power? Do you think so? You would be wrong. There is no strength in the hunger he possesses, and the will behind his power is a primal thing, and it devours him as he devours others. His mere presence kills all around him, slowly feeding him. He is already dead. It is simply a question of how many he kills before he falls. Nothing is impossible with the Force. It is an energy that flows through all living things, and like energy, it may be harnessed, channeled, and consumed at times. It may even be a substance that can burn and ignite. Do not think of his power as one would a weapon, or one of your warships of the Republic. It is terrible, but it is still a subtle thing. The sect of assassins that chase you feed on the Force. What he does is simply the pinnacle of what they could achieve in time. And that is why they and their techniques must be wiped out. No one again must experience and learn what her master did. As much as one may use the Force to bolster the wills and strengths of others, the reverse is possible, though not often used. Instead of sending one's will through connections in the Force, instead such connections are drawn upon, fed upon, and drained completely. Then you understand how terrible such a power is, and why it must be ended. It is an empty road to the dark side, and by traveling it, the price is death before one's time. He is a breach in the Force, capable of consuming the lives of those around him. Sometimes the touch is slow, as it is with his crew. It is not something he can direct or focus, much like hunger itself. He is more of a hole in the Force than a living thing. Force sensitives and worlds rich in the Force draw him. The Miraluka world was one such place. That is why where the Jedi gather, Jedi will die. He will feel it, unless they mask their presence. 
but Qatar called out as a beacon to him and he could not resist it. And he cares nothing for the Sith, or its teachings, or the Jedi. And when the Jedi are dead, he will feed on the galaxy, the Republic, and eventually consume the Sith as well. There is no future in the empty galaxy he sees, and that is why he must be stopped. The breach must be sealed before his power grows beyond what even we can hope to stop. Perhaps he is bound to her, as I am bound to you. If so, there may be a death served by hers. You must be prepared to sacrifice the blinded one. Perhaps her death will... Ask. She did nothing to your eyes that was not already there. She has forced this upon you, but such crude methods are the markings of the Sith. Close your eyes. Feel this ship around you. The welding of the droid as it goes about its work. Now stretch out. Hear the rumble of hyperspace, the hum of the hyperdrive. Ignore distractions and focus on my voice. The breathing of the blinded one as she meditates in the dark. Now, listen deeper past her breathing and listen. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear. For in fear lies death and... You are strong indeed. What you heard were surface thoughts only, but it is something that masters have trained for for years and never learned. That is not the real question you should ask. Is such listening enough to perceive the world around you? It is not. Because to listen to the thoughts of another is much like attempting to see the universe only with your eyes. It is equally limiting. Now leave me be. I must rest. You know, I noticed a glow before, but now, now it's bright around you. You've come a long way since Paragus, and despite all we've been through, you seem a lot better for it. It shows. It's kind of inspiring, to be honest. All right. All right, but I'm out of credits, so it's Repu- That's where we waste a lot of time trading cards and trying to beat each other. But in the end, nobody wins, everybody loses, and nobody accomplishes anything. It's like stalemate, except the goal is to pass time until the audience gets bored and leaves. Sure, shouldn't be a problem. It's basically a numbers game, but I can give you the ground rules.
something up? Sounds good to me. Halt, settler. This is a restricted area. How the hell did you get through the Kinrath? You should leave. This isn't kidnapping, this is bounty hunting. This Jedi is worth a lot of credit, Sunar Shaddai, and we're collecting. I'm gonna say this nice and simple for your little calf hurting head. Unless you wanna wind up dead. Leave now. I warned you, but I'm glad you didn't listen. Attack, men!
I hear you. Just say the word. Always rushing into action without thinking of the consequences. What? You're expecting thanks? Kunda is in danger, and you've ruined the best chance of averting a full-scale conflict. Right now, Dantooine is at a critical moment. If Kunda falls, then the Republic may lose control of this system. Still, I'm surprised you were able to get this far. Although you do have your Jedi training to fall back on. Every action has consequences, no matter how small or insignificant they seem. And even the smallest choice has the potential for harm. The Mandalorian Wars was proof of this. Intentions mean nothing of a greater tragedy is caused. I need to get to Kunda and warn them. They could be attacked at any moment. The mercenaries have allied themselves with the Exchange and are planning to attack Kunda. They've been holding off for the right moment. And now, since they lost their captive Jedi, they'll attack immediately. I'm going to try to reach Administrator Adari. Time is of the essence. You are the Jedi I've heard reports of, and I am Azkul, leader of the mercenaries on Dantooine. That is correct, and I want you to help me. According to my reports, I have four times as many soldiers as the militia, and I am committed to taking Kunda. It is inevitable that I will succeed. If you wish to avoid my men eradicating the people of Dantooine, you will make it easier for me to take Kunda. Of course, I will pay well for your services. There are many ways someone with your abilities can aid us. Before the action begins, I have two main tasks in mind for you. Disable the gun turrets and the traps. Return to me when you are ready for us to begin our assault. I warn you not to keep me waiting. <laughs> 